This episode of Nintendo Pod Block is brought to you by, well, you. If you want to learn how to support our Fennial podcast, head over to patreon.com slash bossrushmedia or search for us on the Patreon app on your smart device. Thanks for helping us build something better. Alrighty, welcome to Nintendo Power Block here on Boss Rush Games. I'm your host and license sided ADV. Joining me is the one, the only bossman himself, Mr. Corey Deering. Hello, good sir. Hello, I am spry and ready to podcast. Can you tell? Yes. Yes. I seriously, I seriously went to the bathroom and like washed my face and like rubbed some color into my face so it didn't look like I was dying on camera. How do I look? You look beautiful. Gorgeous. So I even put the light on behind me, which I never do. Ah, you make me smile. Like a, a whole new background you got going on. Yeah, that's my wife's desk. That's my gaming chair. This little chair underneath my wife's desk is my children's chair. And there's all my children's books and games over here. And that's my old TV. And all my game consoles are right here. Fancy. So, I usually have it darkened back there but i don't know we'll see it's a new year new year new me right that's how it yeah. goes hey, that's hey. the saying that's also nice. at least. also this hoodie is something that i wouldn't normally wear on the show but it's super comfortable and i don't care i wear in our uh nintendo pop black 300 episode hoodie and Ooh. it's warm i just folded that shirt the other day and put it up on the top shelf ah uh Everybody, we also have the talented TikToker herself, Miss Cordy Yikes. Yes, hello. Hello, gamers. Word. <laughs> how are Word you guys? Word to your gamers. Word to your gamers. Yeah. Uh, how was how was everybody's weekend, Cordy? It's, it's been a while since we talked. How was your weekend? <laughs> My weekend. Yes. You really want to know? It's not great. Just say great. Think- okay yeah no it's okay yeah no it's so great it's fantastic way to go 2023 it's really showing its true colors oh wow it's not even 10 days so (laughs) Uh, (laughs) as of this recording it's only been eight or seven and three quarters (laughs) even worse (laughs) Uh, yeah Corey, how how was uh how was your weekend it was great thanks for asking ed nobody in my house is sick (laughs) Everybody had a great time. Actually, we went to Disney on Ice on yesterday, mm-hmm. so that was fun. Uh, it was, it's Frozen and Encanto, which are my daughter's favorite, so it was a good time. Yeah. It was a good time. She was standing and dancing the whole time. It was super cute. Oh, except, except my wife and I were like dying because we were both <laughs> sick. <laughs> uh, but other uh, than that, super good. Um. For me, it was um, it's been an adventure, I should say. Um, I already had a call off yesterday, so I had to work the whole day Saturday at the store. Um, you should just quit working. You know what? I actually had this this dream, Corey, this daydream, and uh, oh boy! So what happened was is that uh, I was I was I didn't have to go to work yet. But um, there was something on your side at your job that y'all needed a guest host to do the podcast, and so my name, so my name came up, and you had all the notes and everything. So, um, you asked your boss or you asked the guys if I could host or something. You asked, and I said, okay, I could help out. I could host, and you know, did the whole podcast thing. Was having fun with the guests and everything. Didn't know didn't know the show or the script or anything, but you know, was faking it till I made it. Yes. <laughs> and so I did That's such what I a... do on this show all the time, man. I don't oh, know wow. if you're aware. Fake it till I make it. Oh wow. Also, um, I need a side tangent already. We're what, three minutes into the show? I am going to switch desks next podcast because like this desk like it it's kind of like creaky because it's like it's a wooden desk that was like mm-hmm. put together weird and like when i 
lean down on it, it makes all these creaky noises, and I got to get rid of that because my microphone picks them all up. So, yes. uh, okay. Anyways, just just you know, one of those side you'll, tangents. You'll be in a new <laughs> desk. I'll be in a new room. And so, Ed, you got to be in something new next week too. <laughs> um, I'm I I am going to try. I should no, say you're that. not. No, you're not. <laughs> Yes, you said well, that I, last week, Ed, and guess what? Here you are. Well, I remember said got, you said you were gonna try to get a desk and like do a thing last week. Remember when you said that? I, look, look where you're at. I ended you got up your Yoshi's Woolly World poster behind you from Toys R Us. You know, it's so cute though. I love it. I'm just saying you're in the same spot you've been in for eight years now. So uh, why look, change? I am going to. I got. I ended up getting called in and got busy. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. I am working on it because I have a new art piece that I want to show. Anyway, quickly to end the story <laughs> that um your boss Corey loved my loved me so much and everything. He offered me a job to just host the podcast for you guys. Mm. And said, I'll double your pay from wherever you work at. Mm-hmm. I will want you, I wanted you to quit. He wanted me to quit my job just so I could work with the company and do podcasts. Did you do mm. it? I woke up after that. Mm. Oh, mm. lame. Sorry, you, everybody, can, I'm ripping a sticker off of this. Uh, <laughs> can you think me and Corey working together? For like a job, job podcast wise, that he all he, all he would have to do is record and edit, and he wouldn't have to host anything. Yeah, that'd be fun. Damn. What are you doing to me, Ed? What are you doing? I want an I I want to host things. I need an editor. That's what I need. I need an editor. Anybody you just need to give them anybody access. out there at all <laughs> that wants to edit like fifteen videos a week, fifteen podcasts a week. Need to give yeah, them access. Get, contact me. I'm, but you have I'm a tired. rhythm to your own madness. <laughs> oh, I'm just really, uh, really tired of it. Uh-huh. I'm tired of editing. Editing is the worst part of any content creation. Am I right? Am I right? You Everybody, are. Even though that's like my job. That's like my real job. But like, man, editing is just, ugh. Putting it on unless, somebody, the... unless somebody pays you for it, then it's pretty sweet. But. You know. But you still have to suffer with it, so still lose lose. I think it's always it's the cutting, and you know I I know for me not so much for the cutting. It's waiting for it all to load. It's the downloading and uploading yeah. stuff that takes a long time because you'll have everything ready to go, and then to be like, well, we're gonna no, give editing. You some- the processing is the longest. Is what takes the longest. So, oh. you know. True. Or the hardest part is, is you try to go through the old clips because you timestamped everything the last podcast, but mm-hmm. then they added all the things that they pre recorded into it to make everything else longer. So you had to watch the whole thing all over again instead of going to your timestamps <clears throat> last week's podcast. <laughs> Shoot, I used a uh, timestamp. I just used a timestamp on YouTube and stuff. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I should probably get back to doing that, but when you have to do that for what fifteen separate shows, it's not. Mm-hmm. I'm not gonna lie, it's not a priority. <laughs> well, should be, but we need what we need is like a producer and a and an editor. That's like the thing that we need the most. And I know nobody wants to do that for free, so we're never gonna have one. But that's like, Cordy's looking at me like. I, I zoomed out instead of zooming in. I've been <laughs> asking. I'm like, let me help you. And you're like, no, no, no. There's a certain. Like, let me, just let me help you. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, everybody, that's behind the scenes stuff for podcasts and everything. But, but we're not going to give you all the boring stuff. Because, guys, so what, guys? It's time for Snack Tendo. Yes. Oh, I man, am going. To... We weren't going to do boring stuff because my oh, snack tendo is super boring. So. <laughs> Shoot, my Mine snack tendo so good. My snack tendo. I had uh, a cheeseburger from Chili's, um, with some uh, with some mashed potatoes. Really good. Um, and, but I actually got to taste their uh baked potato soup, 
Oh, it was so good. They gave me a small cup, though. I'm like, I need a bigger cup than this. Um, <laughs> just, just so delicious. Um, I did try the Twix cookie dough and the Mickey Way cookie dough uh, candy bars that just came out. They're okay. Um, I, I, I think still to this very day, when it comes to the Twix, the cookie and cream is top tier. I, I still feel like that is number mm-hmm. one. I have a whole bag um, in my freezer, but I'm not opening it until I reach my first goal of. of you you found resolution. some? Yeah, I have a whole bag. Where at? And my Christmas gift from my parents. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Anyways. Good times. Twix. So. Uh, the, the, the cookies and creams are so good. Have you ever tried them uh, or seen them, um, Cordy? Not the Twix ones. No, I've seen the commercials for it, but I've never mm. tried them. Mm, I've tried the Hershey's. So that one's good. The Hershey's is good, yes. You know what? I miss the chocolate mint Hershey ones. They used to do it around spring. Um, mm. And it, it was Here kind of like... Patrick's Day. Yeah, it was. it, it was kind of like... For I think was it nasty like a nasty crush bar also or was it just the mint chips in it? I think, I it, was think it was just the mint chips. Okay, um, that was so good. I miss those candy bars from Hershey. They um, might come back. I mean, they're bring they're slowly bringing things back from the pandemic, which is nice. So everything okay. just really stopped production, and now like uh-huh. everything's like slowly rolling back. It's just taking its time. Can we please get that blue monster? Uh, cause <laughs> I know, man. Right? Man, Cordy, Gosh. that blue monster, um, because I worked with the uh coat um uh, vendor and he was just like that became so popular over the pandemic. They don't know why. It it was a big jump in them. They said it got so hard for them to produce it quickly because it would sell out that they did just they had to stop making it. Yeah. Yeah, that's annoying. It's, yeah, it's my favorite one. It's <sighs> so good. Uh Wait, hold on. Time out. Time out. Amazon has it on in stock. We have breaking news. Blue yeah. monsters. Yeah. Ah. Um. Uh. Yeah, I just t- got excited. <laughs> Today I had some Denny's. I had some moon. Uh, moons over my hammy. <laughs> uh, I love that. I just love it. And um, I actually got some seasoned red potatoes because I've never had those and really good. Um, and of course, drinking a lot of water, smart water. Um, you know, like I said, Same. cutting down on the soda <laughs> and everything. Um, I did buy a big thing of Sprite. It was like a dollar forty nine, though. It was the it, but it's warm and everything. So I was just mm-hmm. like, I, I, I'll treat myself to this. It did not go back to the water thing uh, throughout the week. Uh, mm. But that's pretty much it. I. Um, that reminds me, I poured myself a glass of water and I don't know where I put it. You think you left it in the kitchen? Probably, because I'm a, a dope. Yeah, and uh, you really need that. I know. <laughs> so, uh, he probably got a monster hidden underneath the desk. I'm not hiding it, it's right here. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, I don't. I didn't hear him crack one open, so. Yeah, it's because I did it before we started recording. Oh, wow. Mm-hmm. So we don't get that crispy. Although, that should be just like my opening now. Yeah, it should. The one, the only bossman himself, Corey Deergrick. Click. <laughs> What's Crisp. up, everybody? <laughs> well, Matt used to do that on our old show, remember? Yeah. And every time we would introduce him, he would crack open a, probably a beer, actually. But, you know. <laughs> a Anyways. So, uh, but that's pretty much it. Corey, what have you been stacking on? Uh... Does Mucinex and ibuprofen count? <laughs> <laughs> At this so point in time, those yes. Like candy. That ain't good. Uh, Make sure you drink plenty of water. Mm, haven't done that. That's what you need to do. I know. Yeah. Especially it's, it's if you're taking the them like candy. If you're it's taking them the like candy, you need it. <laughs> I still got my uh, orange juice in the refrigerator. Orange juice, gross. Calcium with, va- calcium with vitamin C. I'm just going to go out on a limb. I'm just going to say, nobody likes orange juice. He's a lie. I no. like Sunny D. Sunny D's not orange juice. 
It's orange. And it's it's orange juice, but it's not orange juice, you know? It's a but thicker it's... orange juice. No. Yeah. No, it's not. It's just juice that's orange. No, it literally Sunny D has is not like orange, orange juice. In it. it has to be. This is this is gonna go viral on TikTok. <laughs> feel it. <laughs> Uh, no, day. Sunny Sunny D is not orange juice. It's just orange juice. You you know what he got on me, Cordy, because I had quick one day and he said that quick is not milk. I'm just That's like quick I'm is not with... chocolate milk. Quick is milk. What is it? It's you a chocolatey about? drink with artificial dairy product in it. How did you have artificial dairy? You know what? It's like string it's like the string cheese of chocolate milk. It's not real. Wow. It's like the cheese whiz of, of chocolate Ooh, milk. Dang, you're oh, proving no. all of us wrong. I just Google searched if Sunny D was orange juice. It's 98% water and corn syrup. Yeah. With a citrus, tangy taste. Yeah, see, not orange not juice. Not orange juice at all. It's basically well, Sprite. It is definitely something I drink in the morning. It's basically Sprite. my breakfast, so. It's like Sprite or 7-Up or like, I don't know. It's better than that. Can it's you like, look it's quick? Like, it's like it's like the Fago brand. <laughs> oh wow! F A Y O Fago. Yeah. Oh, did you saying. see? Man, you see that in Wisconsin? Every time I go to Kenosha, uh, to my uh, to my grocery store in Kenosha, they have a whole section of Fago and just all different kinds of flavors that I never knew. I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. So, anyways, uh, by the way, speaking of speaking of Wisconsin, Jesse's coming on Boss Rush this week. Yay! He's going to talk so about happy. he's going to talk about anticipated games this week with us. Yay! I'm so, so happy. I got to go uh, and see him when I can. Go yeah, my... I miss Jesse. I do too. Uh, Cordy, what have you been snacking on? Yes, thank God, I was so ready. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all sweating over here. I'm like, let's do it. No, um, uh, they're back from the pandemic. The one, the only Oreo Cakesters. Woo! Ah. <laughs> have you not had an Oreo Cakester? I we sell them, but I have not had. Oh, you're missing out. Look, it's like cake in between the Oreo filling. Mm-hmm. At the, at the... They were gone for like a year and a half. I was looking really? for them. They came in chocolate and they came in the vanilla ones. And now so they just want... brought back the chocolate ones. So I think so we just got them again, like you said, after the pandemic. We yeah. were getting some through it, but it was like like a holiday kind of promotion thing. Yeah, they so... had the holiday box and then now they're like really throwing them out there finally. Okay, so that's probably what we was getting at. I haven't seen the vanilla ones. I only just seen the chocolate ones. They came out like just before the pandemic, they were like, oh, we're going to start doing these ones, too. I was like, yes. And they taste really good. Like, if you don't like the chocolate aftertaste, uh-huh. the vanilla ones, they were so good. <sighs> the vanilla, it's better than a cake. It really the is. Van- the vanilla Oreos and that then the uh, lemon vanilla Oreos, when they mm-hmm. had them out, who top tier. They're bringing the lemon ones back. <gasps> I saw yes. them uh, recently at, at the Walmart in Houston. Okay. Um, I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try the Oreo cakes. I seen them, sure. but I just no one has like really talked about them besides you. They're real uh, good, but the vanilla ones are better. But I mean, I'll take my chances and eat the chocolate ones. Eat the chocolate ones. Yeah, they're still good. I do have some little Debbie's um, honey bun uh, mini muffins. Hmm. Really good. They, they go down real easy. Like, you really could pop them in your mouth and just, like, chew over them for a little bit and go. That's it. They give you a lot in the back, too. Like, about almost, like, nine to ten muffins. Oh, really? So, yeah. So, uh, anything else, Cordy? I mean, I had Cheddar's finally after six months, and that was really <gasps> good. I still have not had Cheddar's. Oh it's gosh. all. It's, it's. Dude. You're missing out. So, once again, in the same place. Okay, so in I went the place that I go in Kenosha, it has a Cheddar's there right across, like, a little bit down the street from the grocery store that I shop at. And 
uh, across the street from our there uh, the JC Penney at Target. And every time I pass through that Cheddar's, it is packed. Like yeah. I can't. Like I think yeah. they'd be like try to get yeah. a reservation, and we try, and it still get and it still be packed. Yeah, it's, you got to go like pretty early and like kind of wait it out. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but like they're so good. So like instead of like you know like some restaurants they give you chips and queso, they don't. Yes. They give you fluffy croissants with like this honey syrup on top of it, and they're Ooh. just so fluffy. It's worth it's worth it. It's worth waiting. That they'll go. Oh, we have an hour to wait. It's worth it. It's so good. And then they got this strawberry lemonade drink. It's so good. It's so good. She just got some about strawberry lemonade also. <laughs> right? Sorry, Corey, that we're talking about this food. I know. No, that's fine. Have you had cheddars? I've never heard of cheddars, so no. Oh, man. Y'all missed it. Probably not that. around it's so here. so good. Yeah. So. Well, everybody, um, we are going to get into playing with power. Cordy, what have you been playing with power? Me? Yes. I have been really on the Pokemon Go kick. I've been actually oh, nice. like, I've been going around and doing the raids and um, like meeting a lot of other people that do the Pokemon Go. It, mm-hmm. I've been, I've been, it's really good. I'm now I like finally that game's so going. I'm level 56 now, so. Nice. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Look, I when I was working at the restaurant, what, five, six, seven years ago at this point, whenever that game came out and I was working at the restaurant, there was a, there was a Charmander in our bathroom at work. <laughs> I caught it. I said, I won. I won Pokemon Go, and I uninstalled it. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I've never, I still to the very day, I never played it. Oh, y'all should. It's fun. Like, if you're, like, walking around or, like, I don't know. Walk. If you're an introvert and you don't like dealing with people, you play Pokemon Go. That's what I do. I don't like people. I don't like people either. So I just go and be like, okay, there might be a Pokemon around here. <laughs> don't bother I'm, I'm, me. I'm good with people. I, I love meeting new people. I, I guess I'm an extrovert because I love meeting new people. Now, there are some people that would get told off in the red to filth <laughs> by me. Um but I love meeting people. I love look. I met you guys and everything. And <laughs> well, I mean, yeah. like not like in person, like a you know those weird strangers that like to scratch their heads and be like, "Hey, so uh, how are you?" I'm like, "Oh, stop it, <laughs> go away." I don't want to talk working, to you. <laughs> working in retail, you have learned to work with different people. I have 18 years of experience <laughs> plus <laughs> of it. Trust me. Yeah, I worked. I worked in a restaurant. And I had enough of it. So, yeah. you know. You know. It's fine, though. I have a desk called myself at work now. It's cool. I'm on the nice. other side of the building of everybody. It's so oh. nice. You moved uh, office? No. Are you still no. in the same office when you started? Yeah. Well, oh. the girl that used to occupy my office, too, uh, left. So, and they never uh, filled that desk. Oh, so wow. by myself. So All y'all by are hiring. Myself. What? <laughs> what? So y'all are hiring. Hmm. I don't know actually if we are. We were at one point, but now I don't know. Yeah. Yeah, I know there's some places. I think because after the holiday, they did some uh, hiring freezes, but that might change soon. Yeah. Everything. Depends on how the events go in the first quarter. So, yeah, we shall see. They say. But anything else, Cordy? What have have you been playing with Papa? Just Pokemon Go. Yeah, just Pokemon Go. I've been busy moving and packing up things. So, gotcha. Okay. I have no game systems with me right now. Oh, I've been. Pl- I played Fall Guys last week, but oh, I, nice. I think I, I talked about that already. Fall Guys is fun. You've been playing the Unreal version of unpacking. Yes. <laughs> I've been uh, I that I'd rather play the video game than actually go through my things and go, where the heck did I find this? Like, I don't even remember getting this. <laughs> like there's a dresser in my closet and I don't remember putting it in there. Oh wow. Yeah. yeah. I have a yeah. problem. <laughs> well, Corey, um, what have you been playing with power? Um, I haven't really been playing much, honestly. Uh 
I played a little bit of Iron Banner in Destiny 2 uh, because they brought back the armor set that everybody's wanted uh, mm. from Destiny 1. And uh, so I've been playing a lot of that. And then I've been playing some, not a lot, though. Uh, I'm trying to work on some stuff. Uh, but I uh, played some Disney Dreamlight Valley. And uh, it's been fun. But I haven't really played a whole lot. Okay. So. Yeah. Um, for me, um, Vampire Survivor, I opened up a Oh, new I played some era. of that, too. Oh, cool, nice. Hi. I opened up a new area. Uh, area got some new characters. New area. Uh, yeah, like I'm on level four now. That I what? Opened. There's levels. Yeah, I didn't know that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh, now you know. <laughs> so, uh, I I <clears throat> I actually was able to do a full run for thirty minutes. And everything. So I got my minutes. characters. I got my characters part of. Yeah, thirty minutes is the like maximum time level, and then you get a you get an achievement for that. Whoa! Yeah, Vampire Survivors. What a game! What a great game! Yeah, it's only five bucks. It's five bucks on on Xbox and mobile. I I'm, I really hope that the indie direct, uh, the indie world, if they do another Dude, one. If this I game really doesn't come that's... to Switch. They're messing up. This, it, game is, this game is totally a Switch game, but it is. It the achievements is. make it nice to like aim for stuff, you know. Mm. Yeah. Well, it was in beta version before it came to consoles and Game Pass. So when it came, when it came to uh, when they did the update and brought it to the Xbox brand and PC uh, or Windows, I think that's when they started adding the levels and everything. Cause like the first level, you start out with that, uh, with, uh, with the um, Castlevania looking dude. He was yeah. like the only character in the game, and that was like the only level. Yeah, stuff. he's still he's still my favorite because you get the whip, and then you can kind of customize your area of attack around the whip. Mm-hmm. And then I, I get the double whip, and then I get the axes and the in the floating Bible. Oh, you do. Oh, to, uh, I get. Uh, so I got the girl with the wine, with the home yeah. kind of thing, and then I would get knives, um, the axe, uh, I, and then the shield that's around me. Yeah, I would get. I usually get the shield too. I like the shield. Yeah, I think once I, I always try to uh, do like the the bigger bosses or the bigger enemies, so I can open up the chest. And hopefully I get a chest that like give me like five items <laughs> to like fully power me up. Yeah. Uh, and stuff. I never I never get any of the things to make the experience points more or and stuff. I don't either. I'm just I, like, don't, I don't care. I would rather like just walk around longer. <laughs> right. Being destructive. So yeah. Um It's so awesome when you have the double whip when you get the double whip and then and the uh shield that goes all the way around you that damages enemies yeah and then the axes and then those big groups of bats come in like the big groups of bats and you just walk through them and they like, <laughs> almost all of them yes oh so good and then uh, they just keep coming at you you're like haha so the yeah. only part the only thing that like scares me when i'm playing that game or like that it's almost like i don't want to call it a checkpoint because it's not a checkpoint but like when you've been playing long enough to where all those plants start closing in on you and you have to like yeah. all the way through. That's like the only part of the game I like really don't like it because like I know I'm gonna get hit at some point. But. So so the first one if you stay in a while, it disappears. When it gets to the second one, depending on how powerful you is, uh you could destroy part of it and walk through. Sometimes I just literally walk through and get lose the health and then go somewhere and get the Find get that chicken. uh turkey. Or the chicken, yeah. yeah. I don't know what it is. It's something. It's some sort of bird. Yeah, it's it's just such a fun game. It's it's the, I would say this. Vampire Survivors is the equivalent of Hades when it came to when Hades came to Switch. Nah, uh, man, Vampire Survivors was better. Well, 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 in the in the fact that when Hades came to Switch, because Hades had been on the Epic Game Store, it really. No one was really talking about it, but the full version hit uh, Nintendo Switch, 
And Hades became popular. That's how we got Game of the Year because people started like, "Oh, it's a Switch game," and people start playing it. And got I don't know, it DNA sold. Switch. It sold more on Epic and then Steam by the time it came to Switch through the early access. It was popular but, before it came to Switch, but but I, I think it's because Switch probably made but, it more mainstream. I think. Well, yeah, I think that, that's why I say I, I kind of feel like, and this may just be me, that nobody really was talking about it. Um when it was on on the on PC. Like I don't even think like people were streaming it and stuff. Cause when they came when they came to Switch, people started streaming Hades and talking about it and stuff. So I kind of feel like that with Vampire Survivor that people are now picking it up, talking about it, trying to get other people to play it. Cause it's not only is it cheap, but if you have Game Pass, you get it's you know, you get the game there and stuff. So and it's a game that you can just literally zone in and stuff. Yeah. So uh last but not least, um been playing the original Final Fantasy Seven. Um nice. And it's yeah, a lot Cordy, a lot of people have been jumping back into Final Fantasy, like whether they're playing seven or a remake. Mm-hmm. And I I was talking about uh should I start Final Fantasy eight? And people are now about to jump back into eight. Also, um, I play I eight. Guess that's your sign. <laughs> yeah, but the thing about it is, it's been twenty three years because I've or not twenty three, about twenty one some years because I played Final Fantasy eight on PlayStation one, mm-hmm. and I don't like I don't like the game because of the combat. The combat system is just too confusing with the junction and just the way to get weapons. And it's just like, this is frustrating. You just you just got to sing the song, Conjunction Junction, what's your function? Oh, no. And but or nor. And but or nor. <laughs> uh, so uh, I, I think I'm going back and, and do it. Uh, and then, oh, man, I still got Final Fantasy Nine on Switch that I just, just need to give in. It's just like, because I'm halfway yeah. done with it. And the thing about it is I've never got a chance to beat Final Fantasy IX because the third disc of the game on my PS1 did not work. And I'm like, are you serious? Because <laughs> it was a time where when you was playing PS1 games, you had to turn the system upside down to play them. Sometimes. Man, what, a weird, what a weird time. Yeah. Yeah. So... um, I just want to end up getting that. But Final Fantasy 7, yeah, a lot of people just went back to the original and started playing it and everything. And so I, I'm i playing it on uh, Series X, you know, kind of doing it uh, with the turbo. And I think I'm doing it because of, of the achievement system. I mean, the trophies and stuff. Um, So that's the only reason why I kind of do it. And plus, it's been, like I said, it's been a while, over 20 years since I played it and stuff. And it's, it's still fun. You know, so I can't wait to play more of that. But I am going to jump into Detroit Become Human uh, starting Tuesday um, this week. And Pokemon Scarlet, I'm I've been playing also. Nice. Um, but the, I'm, that game is addictive when it comes to grinding because <laughs> I'm trying to grind my Pokemon, and then I'm going to go to some random gym and go all in. Um, so I, I'm excited. If you want to be a Patreon producer, head on over to Patreon, patreon.com slash Media, and find out which tier is right for you. Our Patreon producers at the $5 tier or higher for this month are Adriel Munger, Austin Campbell, Celeste Roberts, Christian S., Sana Dierig, Francisco Santillan, and Rebecca Jewell. Thank you for your continued support. So everybody, um, we are going to get into uh, a great discussion. Um, we are not going to have family news this week, but we'll have it uh, next episode. Uh, it's because, because it's because there's no news. That's the thing. I don't I don't really care that like you know. So I try to. I, there there's there is some news this week, but like I try to stay away from like oh uh this game revealed box art how cool does it look that kind of news and stuff you know and it's just like you know i just i don't need i don't need that kind of news right that's not really news like no. news power wash simulator might arrive on switch soon 
like that's not news you know no no offense to like like if i don't know i just don't want that kind of news you know i mean i i don't want to report on like this thing might happen maybe sometimes yeah, so. I think I think a lot of people are just not returning back to work, so there yeah. really hasn't been no exciting news. I mean, the the Switch rumor, I'm like we covered that already. Yeah, uh, plus we haven't really talked about which games we're excited for that are coming out this year. You know, because there's yeah. a lot of good ones. There's I have like, I have a bunch written down. I know like Ed doesn't have Zelda on his list. Spoiler, everybody, but I think maybe like I was thinking about it. Because I think Zelda, I think Zelda is probably everybody's number one at this point, right? So, yeah, yeah. I think maybe at the end, like I'll add a sixth one, and then we can all kind of talk about Zelda at the end. I think, yeah. And, and the reason I, I'm just gonna explain the reason why I don't have Zelda on my is because it's He's already a, a fan. It's already a given expectation that is anticipated. It's kind of like, for a lot of people, almost like the number one game that people are looking for. Of course, we got like Dead Space coming up this month, uh, Fire Emblem Engage, Kirby um, Remake. I only pick, I only pick March. games that are coming to Switch, by the way. Oh, um, Resident Evil 4 Remake. Like, we, I mean, the stuff that people are across in the gaming sphere in general people are thinking of but i'm like there are some games that like a lot of nintendo games is hit in february along with this month like big games and stuff um and then there's some good indie games also so i i, I would say this i recommend people go to watch the nintendo direct from september of last year in the indie world uh showcase from november of uh last year um if you want to see what's the latest stuff that is coming um so, yeah. uh, where should we start? Uh, who would like to start? I have my list only did five games though, uh, for mine. Yeah. So I didn't. Well, I only did five too. I mean, I yeah. think I think we were just doing five anyway. Uh, okay. I mean, so I can go first. Uh, Mina the Hollower is my number five. I think that game looks incredible. It, for those who don't know, it's the. Uh, it's Yacht Club Games finally uh their their follow up to Shovel Knight. Uh I know they've published a few games since then, like Cyber Shadow and mm-hmm. Shovel Knight Pocket Dungeon and Shovel Knight Dig and a couple other things, but this is their internally developed follow up to Shovel Knight. It's uh you play this mouse and it's kind of Zelda One esque mixed a little bit with Castlevania is what I've been hearing. Yeah. Uh, like NES Castlevania. And so, um, and the mechanic is like you're burrowing to make your way through the, the environments and stuff. So I'm really excited. Uh, and the other thing, too, is that like if Shovel Knight was an ode to the NES, NES platformers, this is an ode to Game Boy Color, uh, including restrictions on color palette and uh, environment size and everything. So it's I'm I'm really excited. I. I was a little skeptical at first because like I want I want like Super Shovel Knight, you know, whatever that the Shovel Knight 2, whatever they're going to call it. Right. Mm -hmm. Uh, Especially because in an interview, they did say they wanted to do Shovel Knight like we're going to do Super Shovel Knight next and then Shovel Knight 64 and then kind of go down the list. And I was like, oh, man, that'd be super cool. Except, you know, and, and then when they're doing Mina the Hollow, where I'm like, this, this is cool. Maybe this is going to be like their handheld line, right? Like, yeah, yeah. Shovel Knight will be their ode to console gaming, right? And then Mina will be their ode to handheld gaming, which would be super cool. Uh, but Mina the Hollow is awesome. And the art that's been coming out, and I think the character looks super cool. Uh, I really like Yacht Club's art team and like the way they design their characters and stuff super yeah. cool so have they um did any updates for it yet like or just the still the video for the kickstarter uh, game informer game informer put something out a couple weeks ago for me to the hollower they did like a developer diary thing for them okay uh and it's i think it's about 30 or 40 minutes long okay i highly recommend it uh, you should check that out if you want to know more about Mina the Hollower, but it's it looks great. Very excited. Uh, anything that Yacht Club puts out, I will check out, at least check out. 
you know. Yeah, because they kind of, it, I know they went dark because it was a kickstarting game. I know yeah. they met their goal, um, but that's just, I yeah, guess. They crushed their goal. They crushed their goal by like, I don't know, millions of dollars. So. What is it one of their games that they still like had days um, after they had their goal? Oh, yeah, stuff they, and they, beat just... their go- they beat their initial goal after like three days or something. Oh, wow. Wow. So, yeah, I don't know. It's, I'm, I'm glad. I really like, Yacht Club. Yes. You know, they came from way forward, so. I know. Yacht Club's better, though. Uh, they're both Yacht great to me. I know. I love way forward. It's like, <laughs> it's like, oh, man, burritos are better than pizza, but they're both pretty good, you know. Whatever. Corey loves I, his fat burritos. <laughs> oh, my gosh, dude. I, I wanted, gosh. So we got, I'm side tangent. We got Chipotle gift cards for Christmas from someone. Mm-hmm. And all I wanted this weekend was like Chipotle or pizza, and we were both sick, and I didn't get it. And it was very upsetting. Uh, so that sucks. It's, yeah. it's a cheap. It's a cheap meal for you. I in know. The future. It's fine. It's all so. good. In the hood, yo. Word. <laughs> Video games. Yes. Uh, who wants to go next? Eh? I'm down. My number five, it's, I don't know. I think it's exciting because, you know, I'm more into the Mario Kart world. And, like, my first handheld, not handheld, but Nintendo 64 had Mickey Mouse Racing. So Ooh. they're coming out with uh, Disney Speedstorm this yeah. year. I'm, I'm excited for Disney five. Speedstorm. So oh, That's good. That's good. I wasn't sure because, like, you know, oh, it's another racing game. But I'm so I'm excited, excited think- for it. I think we was anticipating it, Corey, because I think I think it got delayed or something. Because I thought it was, come, yeah. it was supposed to come out in like October, or November, and they delayed it. Yeah. yeah, it's supposed to come out this year, and there's Pixar and Disney characters, so it's not yeah. just Mickey Mouse and the gang. It's yeah. everybody. It's, also, it's it's free to play, and everything that you buy is cosmetic. Mm. So I'm quite excited. Also, by I- the way. Speaking of this, like, resurgence of Disney games, like, I know I've been playing Disney Dreamlight Valley, which is also great, but there's a rumor that Mirrorverse is finally going to come to console next year, which is the mobile free-to-play game. It's like, a, nice. it's like an RPG, and I think me, the concept of Mirrorverse is so cool, because they, I, I don't know if you guys are looking at that, and Speedstorm's kind of the same way, mm-hmm. where, like, the classic Disney characters you know and love kind of go into this alternate universe and, like, like you see the the one commercial that always sticks out to me to kind of explain the game is like mm-hmm. Belle is in the library reading a book and she f- leans into the mirror and she falls through the mirror and on the other side she comes out with like this like super awesome cloak and armor because she's like a mage and like she just starts using all this magic and stuff it's super cool I'm uh, gonna take a look I don't I do know what I honestly say I've never heard of it Oh yeah, it's like it's a free to play mobile game. And then they also sell toys too. Uh mm-hmm. it's it's almost like Disney Infinity all over again. And I have like I've come like this close to buying Mirrorverse characters because they come with cards that you can sc- that have QR codes on them that you can mm-hmm. scan into the game and use those characters in your party. Oh man. I'm not the so I'm not cool. look into this. I, awesome. I didn't know that. Yeah. It's so cool because like uh let me see. I have some. I have some stuff saved. Um, so yeah, I uh, sorcerer Mickey is super cool. Uh, obviously, it's not like super random or anything, but mm-hmm. uh, Donald is like the, has like quick attack stuff. Bell is a mage. They have Baymax from uh, uh, Big Hero Six. Uh, Genie is like an all powerful black mage. Uh, blue from jungle book and tailspin is in there as like a like a heavy tanky style character it's super cool he's in his tailspin stuff though he has like his aviator hat on his furry puffy aviator jacket super cool cool. nice but yeah disney speedstorm also super cool can't wait can't wait for disney speedstorm (laughs) Uh, is that on one of your top fives no that's good. But it's it's funny that you mentioned that, Corey, um, because now 
Man, I want Castle of Illusion. We were talking earlier about remakes. I would love the Castle of Illusion. They to already get one. they remade Castle of Illusion. The Sega Genesis one? Yeah, they remade it. You can it's backwards compatible on Xbox Series X. I don't remember that they remade it. Oh yeah, no. I bought it. It's ten it's fifteen dollars. Okay. Yeah, it's an Xbox three sixty remake, but they remade it. It's really good. Ah, uh, okay. Uh, Cause I remember that game on the Sega Genesis, and I loved it. And um, also, yeah. you know they're making a platformer, a Disney platformer, right? That's called like Illusion Island. That's supposed to be a homage to those games. It's like no. a, it's like a new Super Mario Brothers style platformer where you can play single player or multiplayer, and each character has like different, like unique abilities uh, and stuff. Sort of, yeah, like. You know, like Luigi has the flutter jump, and you know they the characters have different things that you can use to go through the level. I'm gonna have to look this up, man. It was in that know. Disney Marvel showcase uh, over the summer. I didn't watch. I didn't get a chance to watch I it. I don't really like the art style, but um, hopefully they'll revamp it. They have time. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of Disney games coming out next year. Indiana Jones also. I don't know if that's coming out next year, but something I'm really excited for. I think E3, we're going to see something. Yeah. Well, as we know, Xbox does not have any sort of, uh, you know, roadmap for anything except for Starfield the first half of this year. (laughs) You know. I thought that was supposed to be out this month. It was supposed to be out in November. Oh, yeah, I know that. But I thought when they delayed it, they were going to delay it to, like, January. Yeah, well, well, no, it looks like June now. Also, Redfall also got internally delayed to May, so. It's insane. Oh, because I oh. think that one is after uh, Tears of the Kingdom. Well, it better come out before because nobody's going to play it if it does. Well, the only thing I can say about that game is thank God it's on Game Pass because nobody would buy it. I'm sorry, Redfall looks cool, but I don't think it's a game that people are like. I haven't heard anybody say they're excited for Redfall. Mm-mm. I think it, it it lost its luster after E3 because it was like one of the top games people were excited to see when yeah. they first showcased it at E3. And then I think once it got delayed, because I think Redfall was the game that people was looking forward to. And they were just yeah. like, we can't wait to see more and actually get to play it. Um, but Starfield was the game, I guess, because that was going to be Microsoft's big game for November. Yeah, I uh, I read somewhere where it, they had they did an interview with someone. I think it was the I think it was either Xbox Two podcast or something. I forget which podcast it was, but they said I know a lot of people think that this is going to be Left for Dead meets Borderlands, and they said it's neither of those. It's a multiplayer Far Cry game. And that got me way infinitely more excited than yeah, Left 4 Dead meets Borderlands. Yeah. I'm excited for it. Redfall is still... I hate Left 4 Dead. I hate those types of games. Uh, Redfall is still one of my anticipated games for Xbox. I'm still looking forward to that. So yes, I will be the one to buy it. The game I'm most excited for for Xbox that has shown any sort of gameplay whatsoever is Hellblade. <laughs> Hellblade 2. Yeah. That's, a, that's a given. Like... I would be excited for Fable, but all we got was that CG trailer. I'd be excited for Perfect Dark, except it seems like the initiative is in some sort of personnel hell. Um, okay, man, I feel like this is an expansion pass because I'm like, what the heck is going on with Microsoft? It feels like if, if the rumors are true, is is Perfect Dark and Fable like rebooted? I don't know. I don't. I heard both. I heard some people say that it was, and I heard people say that those rumors are false, so I don't know. <sighs> We'll, we'll know in June, I guess, when uh, E3 rolls around. Yes. Yeah. And everybody, that was your Nintendo segment of the show. Uh- <laughs> That's, I do I do miss Arsenal X to talk about Xbox stuff because I feel like I never get to talk about Xbox news anymore. Uh, but I'm not... I don't miss it as, so much to like waste another night of my week to record another podcast. <laughs> Although I do miss it. Yes. Well, I'm going to get into my number five, and that's Top coffee, down. coffee talk two. Hey, I am so excited for this game. Uh, I yeah. love, 
we did talk uh talk the walk for the first one uh me Celeste and David and we're planning to do another one for uh this game and we was going to try to get the uh uh the designer uh, of it or the creator of Coffee Talk 2 but sadly he passed away um but do check out Celeste 1v1 with them a really good discussion um I'm so excited because the writing is strong. I love the characters. The chill hop is really good. And I think there's going to have some bounce chill hop in this one too. Um, and I can't wait to actually make some uh, more coffee. And hopefully I'll make it right this time. <laughs> uh, wow. And everything. Uh, but Coffee Talk 2 is my number five. I, I, I'm so... If that game comes out in April, that is... I'm going to be super excited. And everything. There is one game for PlayStation that's coming out um, later on this month. Uh, I think in a couple of weeks that I'm excited for. But for Nintendo wise, Coffee Talk Two. Uh, so, Corey, what's your number four? Third one. Is it, is is? it my turn? Is it my yes. turn? Yes. Um, my number four, and uh, I, I hope it. I hope it ends up coming out this year but i i'm i think it will uh sea of stars is coming soon uh which is that uh kind of chrono trigger meets mario rpg uh uh-huh. pixel game from uh sabotage who did the messenger that game i mean that game just looks beautiful i don't know if i'll like it or not but like man every time i see that game i'm like that's a game i i'm like it takes a lot for an indie game to grab my attention as mm-hmm. most people probably know. Uh, I'm just, I just not a huge indie person, but man, that game looks so high quality in terms of animation and pixel art and music. And it's an RPG with no random battles. You don't have to grind. Uh, you really just play to level up like your abilities and stuff. You're not leveling up like a character level or anything. Mm-hmm. very excited for that game uh it reminds me a little bit of like cross code remember when cross code came out a game that i really want to go back and finish oh man cross code was super cool uh the animation kind of reminds me of that so i'm I'm excited for that yeah i think they're they said they'll be giving some updates for it soon so i'm excited for it hopefully a nintendo direct that is in. i'll be excited to see that yeah but yeah we'll get a nintendo direct in february i think yeah, we better. Because <laughs> we literally don't know anything else besides, from Nintendo, at least. We don't know anything except for what? Fire Emblem? Fire Emblem. Kirby. Kirby. Zelda. Zelda. Um, Unless they do something with Advanced Wars, uh, that's that's very up in the air. But those, like, from, from Nintendo itself, first party-wise, it's just those three. Yeah, everything else is like Indy and third, or I should say Indy and Square Enix. <laughs> Goodness. Yeah. So, uh, Cordy, what is your number four? I'm going to go with Octopath Travelers 2. <laughs> That's my number two. <laughs> See, now we're all taking each other, so ha ha ha. But yeah, now that's my name, number four. I'm excited for it. I really am. It's a whole new, different characters, whole new stories. I'm pumped. I'm ready for it. I I just bought it digitally on Series X because it was on a good sale. So oh, I just it? bought it. Uh, yeah. Uh, so I owned a physical on Switch. Uh, and then it was like, I think about like just $25 or something on Xbox. Um, oh, wow. So I could do it for like the achievements and stuff. But um, yeah, I'm excited for uh, Octopath Traveler 2 also. Uh Yes. Yeah, this is. I feel like this is that this first half year is the year of JPR JRPGs again. <laughs> Part <Yeah>. due, <laughs> uh, because there's some hot ones that's coming out. Yeah, I Octopath Traveler is like a game that I really wanted to be, or the first one I think was a game that I really wanted to be into, and I just I played it, and I just I couldn't get into it, and. Um, it's another one of those games that like the art style and the presentation are more interesting than the game itself, I yeah. think. Um, and hopefully, I mean, hopefully they take 
the lessons because I think that was a lot of people's kind of uh, takeaway from that game is like it was visually and present like the visuals and the presentation were way better than the game actually was, especially when you got late into the game. Uh, so maybe they'll take what they learned and make a, you know, a better kind of gameplay flow out of it. Not that the gameplay was bad in the first one. It just like, you know, and again, I know it's an, it's an a turn-based RPG, but like, it's just uh, got really repetitive and really grindy and, you know, so yeah, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Uh, I see. think it's your turn, Ed. All right. So my number four is uh, Dorgadon. Uh, uh, burp, burp, burp. What? Dorgone. Uh, Dorgone. Um, this is a French uh, game. Um, French. From from the indie world, the red, and you are this girl who is visiting your grandma grandma house, who she passed away, and you play in the present and in the past, and you're exploring her whole house in the area that she lived in. Um, beautiful art style, and that's the reason why I want to play it because of the art style. It has this kind of like water paint look to it but it uh, think of you know that uh the caterpillar book that kind of art style it's like that but in full motion with this beautiful color and uh extent aesthetic of this textures and stuff like you look at it and be like this is an art style that hasn't been done in games and just to see it all come together um, for it, and like I said, I love playing indie games from other countries, um, and a lot of them do come from like Europe, but out you know, and sometimes Mexico and stuff they also come from. But I, I, I see this not, and uh, I look at it. It's it's spelled uh, D O R G O D N E. So uh, when you hear it as French, it's different. But um, yeah, I think Corey, if you if, if with you loving art too, Corey, I think if you just look at the game for this art style, you would at least be impressed. You'd be like, oh, that's that's a beautiful art style that they mm-hmm. that they decided to choose and stuff. Um, so and it's a casual, relaxing game. So I'm excited to play it and just like really deep in. I want to find the mystery of what. What 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 did Granny have her house and stuff, and how the stories in the past and the present how they all play out in the end? I'm super excited for this game. That's good. Nice. <clears throat> yes. So our number three, Corey. What is your number three? Um. So my number three, I it flops like every five seconds because I'm excited for two and three kind of equally. I think. Uh. Fire Emblem Engage looks amazing. Yes. I I watched the the nine minute kind of gameplay overview earlier today, and I watched uh, Nintendo Life's breakdown, and I watched Game Informer's breakdown. And man, this game looks a thousand percent way better than it did when we first saw it. Like mm-hmm. the diff- like the the bonding kind of uh, aspect to it, the floating island that. Uh, you, you kind of take your party and your uh, emblems with you to, to uh, you know, bond with. And there's a store on your floating island where you can play <laughs> dress up with your characters, which is super fun. I'm I'm like, I, I can see myself losing like 100 hours in this game and being like, yeah, let's let's do it. Also, I'm kind of excited. That there's not really any branching paths like in three houses. Mm-hmm. So I'm excited to see intelligent systems tell and in, no pun intended but an engaging story that kind of has a path set for you so yes can i say the the animation in this game yeah can we how <sighs> much better does this game look than when it was first shown off okay yes like, it, like it's running at 60 frames a second which is super exciting the entire like every single battlefield is rendered in 3d so it's going to take place exactly where you are on the map. It'll zoom in and be exactly where you are on the map. Uh, 
the animation is wild. The just the amount of customization looks wild. Like it, it, I'm I'm shocked and excited uh, for this game. I'm excited for the day one DLC, too, because it's three houses characters. No buy mm-hmm. left, though. Very disappointed in that, but it's fine. It's fine. You know, I wonder where they have. I hope from. I know I was about to say the same thing. I wonder <laughs> if Shez will be some sort of wave two DLC. She she's queen. She's iconic. Uh, like she yeah. has to be in the game. I love her. Gosh, the 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 greatest character Nintendo ever created will never be known because Fire Emblem uh, Warriors Three Hopes sold like less than a million copies. So. You you know what I think? Kobe Tecmo and Nintendo would take what they could get with these warrior oh games. Gosh, dude, Shez though is awesome. She is in the I voice want acting. Amiibo. Is, wow. Man, I still want I still want that female Byleth, the good smile statue that's like two hundred dollars. But I also want like a Shez one. Oh my gosh! If they made if they made Fire Emblem statues the way they make these Destiny statues that I'm buying up, man, I would be oh. so poor. Yeah, I'd be so poor. Mm-hmm. Although the Destiny statues went up in price for the same exact model, and I'm very concerned. Yeah. Uh, they went but they're from, also really good quality, so. They are. But they went from $70 to $120. So, gross. And Corey won't let me buy him one for Corey. I'm telling you, we just get his address and we just start randomly mailing him things that we already know that we either have also, or we want to buy for him. Speaking of things that went up in price, GameCube games are starting to go up in price again on eBay. So. Well, that's, that's that's not surprising. Nintendo games always go up in price. I know, but man, I looked up Twilight Princess like right around Christmas, and it was hovering around one hundred and ten dollars. And then I looked at it the other day; it was closer to two hundred. I'm like, oh no! I'm trying to find somebody's grandma who got a Nintendo GameCube for a garage sale, and she just needed to get rid of stuff. I she know. needs she needs ten dollars so she could go get her cigarettes from the local gas station. <laughs> Eddie, this is your mother. Go get me a pack of smokes and some slim gyms. <laughs> <laughs> also some lotto tickets. Oh goodness. That's... Scratch it for five. If that is not my livelihood in the eighties <laughs> <laughs> no my dad's side in the hood. Oh. Man. That was good. That was a good time. Anyways, Fire Emblem Engage looks um, incredible. Yes, I have my pre-order, and I'm excited, and I think I'll be off that Friday. Hmm. I new. won't, but I'll pick it up on the way home from work. So I got the physical of that. You say? I won't open it. I'll get the digital when I get home. Uh, Courtney, what was, your, uh, what was your number three? Minecraft Legends. Ooh. Ooh. That's my number three. I had to change it because y'all kept saying things. So I was like, ah, I'll just use this one. <laughs> I'm really excited about this one. It's like probably my top ten. Um, it's like a Minecraft spinoff in a time form action strategy. It's still set in the same world. You're just finally having missions instead of, you know, using your imagination. <laughs> it doesn't have an exact release date. It says that it's going to be the spring of 2023. But I'm excited for that one. Yeah, I think it's coming to everything. Um, so I'm pretty, I'm pretty, my nephews are excited. So I'll probably get roped into playing with them at some point. Might as well. <laughs> Yay. Hey. They already sucked me into Fortnite, so. <laughs> and Disney Dreamlight Valley. <laughs> no, I'd suck that into myself. Yeah. Oh, that's he, he was playing net with his daughter. His daughter gave up. And yeah, she couldn't have been less play. interested. Yeah. That's nice, Daddy. Pat pat on the head and then ran away. <laughs> no, the thing is, is that she wanted me to hang out with Anna and Elsa, and I did not unlock the frozen level within like the first ten minutes of us sitting there. So she became instantly disinterested. Uh, but she didn't unlock it, of course. She did. She. I did, but also she has zero interest now. Oh wow! Zero, none. <laughs> Thanks. That's that's fine, Daddy. Pat pat on the head, run away. <laughs> so, well, mine is 
Mine is a cop out. Go to nine sixty four. Hurry up, bring this to Switch Online so I can play it. I, I'm so excited to play this game again, back from my old N sixty four days. Look, I think oh. I think everybody loved this game in the late nineties, and mm. everybody's gonna realize how not great that game is. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those games where everybody is gonna play it for an, oh, I love this game, and then it's gonna be like. Man, this is this is this is what we did. This is I mean, this I is mean, what we played. They're going to compare it to the uh, Xbox version, but I, but for, I think for people of a new this new generation to understand why people loved it so much when it came out and everything, it's a it's a good experience and everything. And yeah, they could poo poo over if they want to, but I'm like, I think it's really cool that it's coming out, and I'm I excited can't... to play it. It can't be as bad as that Wii version that they remade. The Although the Yowzers. when I came to Xbox 360 as the HD version, mm-hmm. wasn't, wasn't bad. Wasn't great, but it wasn't bad. Yeah. So, well, Corey, what is your number two? Hogwarts Legacy is my number two. Game looks incredible. Although we haven't seen the Switch version yet, so <laughs> we're not going to see the. Uh, I think we're not going to see, see the Switch version until summer. Yeah, no, it's yeah. Uh, so I will be playing on Xbox Series X in February, and then let you all know how the Switch version runs uh, in July <laughs> when it's supposed to come out. I will be playing it in February also on Series X. Um. But I am so incredibly excited for that game. That game is going to be really something. It's already. Did you see this? Did you see uh, the article that came out where it's already the fourth highest selling game on Steam this year? Oh, it's no. Not even out yet. Yeah. Really? Yeah. It's a, uh, well, fourth, fourth highest selling thing on Steam. It's Steam Deck, Call of Duty, uh, Modern Warfare 2, and then I, something else, and then Hogwarts Legacy. Uh, okay. Yeah. So why would they come to Steam Deck? That's hardware, though. I That's know, but it, it's a Steam product. And oh, you they have just to buy, and you have to buy it through Steam. So. Wow. Yeah. Okay. So All yeah, right. I mean it's. I, I, I'm incredibly. Oh, uh, um. Wait, what? Hold on. This this is right. Uh, top selling games on. So as of right now, as of this recording, top selling games on Steam, right now, Call of Duty: Modern Warfare Two, Hogwarts Legacy. It's not. It's currently sitting at number two. Ahead of Counter Strike Global Offensive and Destiny Two. So oh, wow. Yep. Come on. So yeah. Hogwarts Legacy is gonna be cool. My my Hogwarts house is Ravenclaw. So I... at least according to to, to uh Pottermore. I wonder if you will have to sign into your Pottermore account with this game, which would be really cool. And then like your Patronus and your wand, like that's the wand and Patronus you'll get. Oh my gosh, that'd be super cool. Oh, I, that'd be so cool. I I yell at the Harry Potter series. I hate you. Go away. Guess it's a bunch of Scooby Doo running. And ten points for Gryffindor. Oh, Just <laughs> Ah. Courtney, what is your number two? <laughs> so we haven't brought anything really co- cozy quite yet, so I'm bringing this one in. It is called Fay Farm. Yes. What is yes. that? This is the farming game. Well, I got uh, that uh, from the word it's a farm. More in, it's a more in-depth uh, Stardew Valley and fantasy life. It's a co-op farming sims game, ah. which is aiming towards quarter two of 2023 so spring yeah they showed this one in uh spring direct i mean september direct yes i'm ready for it it looks 
super cute and it kind of just brings back the mobile sims whenever they started those in uh, like 2010 2014 uh-huh. it feels like it's bringing that back but more like a farm instead of like the city little mobile sims that they had mm. i'm ready for okay. it i'm ready for it it's cool it's real cool <laughs> Well, uh, you mentioned Octopath Traveler 2, so that was my number two. Corey, what is your number one? All right. Well, my number one is clearly Zelda, right? I mean, I think that's everybody's number one. But if I have to, since we're all going to talk about Zelda collectively at the end, uh, this is a non-Nintendo game, but Destiny 2 Lightfall is coming out at the end of February. And I'm incredibly excited. I don't really know what else to say about it. You got you got Strand coming. You got you got the uh, kind of synth wave uh, soundtrack going on. You got mm-hmm. the Blade Runner meets kind of uh, new wave retro type thing going on. Uh, you got c- cyber ninja armor coming in. Grappling hooks. So cool. <laughs> so yeah destiny destiny 2 life fall duh. duh even though that's not on nintendo switch that's what i said at the beginning if you were listening ed <laughs> i said this is a this is a non-nintendo game but see see ed doesn't listen to me do you listen to me no but because you don't listen to me but i do listen to you Mm. Just not this time. Mm. What's your um, number one, Ed? Uh, Gordon, what's your number one? Oh yeah, did, wait, really? <laughs> that was so quick. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. My number one would be the Harvest Moon that's coming out for the Switch, uh, uh, 2004 version for GameCube, but it's not called Harvest Moon: A Wonderful Life. It's called Story of Seasons: A Wonderful Life. Have you Have you watched the video about all? That between what is the Harvest Moon mess. drama, yes, yes. titling the stuff, yeah, we're like, yeah, the story of season games are like the real Harvest Moon games, and then the Harvest Moon games are like the like the dollar general versions of the old Harvest Moon games, yeah. What's so bad though is this one, even from like the like trailer that they showed, I played the GameCube version of Harvest Moon, it has the exact characters. The exact it's like they just peeled the sticker off and was like story of seasons yeah yeah but i'm down for so it crazy. i loved that version that one that one was my favorite out of all the harvest moons so i'm down if they go off and kind of remaster it yeah. it's my number one since we can't all say zelda <laughs> we can't all say zelda ed told us we couldn't so what no i just said that wasn't my number one that wasn't on my list you're so. on, you're not on my list. Mm. Would you put me Which, ever put me on the list, Corey? What's your number one? Ed, what's your number one? My number one, and it everybody should so know bad. that I'm I was so giddy. I yelled on the internet like it was the best thing that happened in my life. Um, the it's Tales of Symphonia remastered. Nice. Mm. I know it's not the GameCube version. That's fine. But Tales of Symphonia is so good. When I talk about music, story, gameplay, it has it all. Like it, it is so good, and the voice acting is very, it's well, it's well done. It's the it's a game that got a lot of people into the Tales series. Yeah. And, um, I mean, I played it on GameCube, and it was four players and everything. Like That game was incredible. It, it was so much is. And even though it came on two discs, uh, there's still a lot of that. that uh, there's still some stuff in that game I've never found. Like, the Dark Chest... 
that laid around, I never knew how, how to open them. So I kind of want to go through this game with a strategy guide to figure out how I should open those and everything. Um, and plus, you get to beat up a big dragon and stuff. Oh, and that final boss. Ooh, good googly moogly. <laughs> yeah, good luck with that. Yeah, I, I mean, I beat the final boss. I mean, I beat the game before, but I'm just happy that it came back. Uh, and I know it's in the news that Bandai, Bandai Neko said, you know, they, they're they up to doing more remakes or remasters for the Tales series. So I need Tales of Graces F to come to Switch. Like, that, and that one is really good. That one is a odd story, but the gameplay is really good for that. It's, it's a really good grinding game to get into. Um, but yeah, Tales of Symphonia Remastered. Got my copy already pre-ordered. I'm so ready for that. Nice. Can we all talk about Zelda now? Yes. How so, excited we are for Zelda? Because I'm really Legend, excited for Zelda. The Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom is releasing on May 12th of this year. Yes. Good. There's um, videos out there showcasing what the game is going to offer. Um, it looks beautiful. I'm really waiting for the soundtrack. I want to hear this music and everything. I I I think it's one. It's gonna be another game that. How do you talk about this game without spoiling anything? Yeah. Well, we're going to. <laughs> so, for uh, Boss Rush Book Club. <laughs> so. Yes. So, um. I'm super excited for this game. Like it to me, it is, it is the anticipated game of the year for me. I just didn't put it on this list, and well, I don't I th- feel like. I mean, oh, go ahead. We were making fun of you for not putting it on your list, but uh, we just, you know, we, I think we all came to the conclusion that it was all of our number ones, so we just kind of went with Ed's version of the list, and then decided to talk about Zelda at the end. Yes. It's I not think, a I Nintendo think, uh, power block if you don't talk about Zelda. Yeah, I, I think... I mean, I think it's everybody's most anticipated game. E- even outside of this show, right? I mean, mm-hmm. everybody is anticipating this game. So, yeah, I just... Uh, Zelda is going... I, if it's... I think Breath of the Wild was a great foundation. I think this game is going to be extremely sad. I think it's going to be dark. I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be the Empire Strikes Back of this trilogy. I've said this a thousand times. Ed and I have had this trilogy talk a thousand mm-hmm. times. Yeah. Um, it's going to be dark. It's not going to end the way people think it is. It's definitely yeah. going to set up a third game. Um, I was reading uh, one website and it said that you could play like Gandalf. So it's like, is it like his origin story mix? That would be cool. Uh, that'd be cool that'd be like you I know mean, Sky- well that was kind of Skyward Sword was Ganon's kind of origin story with Demise right so yeah. I mean but like to play as him and oh go through I don't you're not going to play as him I don't think you're going to play as him no, you're, the only, time, only game that you're going to be able to play again is Hyrule Warriors yeah so you're yeah. not going to it would be cool if you could play as like Zelda and Ganon in this game or whatever, but like you're not gonna. There, I, it doesn't seem like Nintendo really wants to stray away from Link at all, which is sad because I actually think like a. Uh, oh, it was a fan theory that it was a Gandalf being a playable character. It's like I knew Gan- I saw it somewhere, but you yeah, know, it's Gandalf. It's, uh, mm-hmm. Is it the Lord of the Rings? Isn't that his name? It's Ganon. G A N O N D O R F. Ganondorf. Ganondorf. Yeah. Ganondorf. He's Gandalf. always Gandalf. Gandalf. <laughs> Where's our Gandalf yeah. game, by the way? X <laughs> from software. They're probably even making it. Mm, gross. By the way, I played some Elden Ring. That sure is an open world Dark Souls game. I don't. <laughs> It's still in the plastic. Haven't it's uh, it. it's an open world Dark Souls game. I I don't know how else to explain that game. 
I know people like it. It's great. Uh, anyways. I, I, will, I will say, I kind of want to see, you know, where everybody's going to be looking if it's going to have weapon degradation in it or if you could, um, you know, make it strong. But I also wonder, you know, will there be special weapons for Link to get that doesn't break and stuff? Will the blacksmith be able to upgrade, um, upgrade it? Um, me, Stephanie, and Corey, we had a little discussion about link between worlds, um, uh, that you guys will see in the future. Just you'll understand why. And we talked about like when link between worlds, you could buy the weapons and buy. Well, you can rent the weapons and uh, items that you need. And then then when you die, you lose those weapons. You have to go back and buy them again. And at a point, um, if you pay the full price for them, you was able to keep it and everything. And and I wonder if that system is going to be there where, you know, it's easier to get rupees to buy stuff. Because I think that was the one struggle, definitely with Breath of the Wild, was that, it was hard to buy these things because you weren't getting given enough rupees to get, uh, to get these items. You normally have to pretty much like sell fruit or sell whatever to get money to buy stuff, you know? Um, and how's the armor stuff? Are we going to be able to customize it and make it stronger? So I wonder if a Numa and the team, uh, or even a monolith soft, because I, I feel like a Numa then probably looked at monolith soft. It was just like, how can we kind of, you know, improve this or streamline this game so people, the players, won't get frustrated and everything. You know, right? No, I get that one. I ho- hopefully they do that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Go ahead, Corey. No, I I was just gonna say like. I feel like this game is really important. I feel like Breath of the Wild hits so many different things in so many of the right ways. And mm-hmm. I I don't think Breath of the Wild was a perfect game by any stretch, but like they did they did a lot of really unique and interesting things in terms of exploration and rewarding players who explored and tried different things. Like I solved a bunch of shrines that like I looked up guides later. And, like, that's not even close to how you're supposed to, to <laughs> solve these shrines. And I was like, oh, well, whoops, I guess I did it that way anyway. And the freedom that they allowed you to have in that game was awesome. Yes. Uh, my my two biggest criticisms were uh, weapon degradation without crafting. Like, I think if you have breakable, uh, breakable weapons that you should, A, be able to craft new weapons or craft those weapons to make them stronger and then B have unbreakable versions of the weapons that you offer, right? Like the master sword is really the only one that's unbreakable. Right. And uh, I think the way that you solve that, which comes to my second point is the lack of, of traditional Zelda dungeons. Like I think you can easily put traditional Zelda dungeons in there without Mm -hmm. um, compromising the freedom because you still have all the tools you need uh, at the beginning of the game, right? They give you all the tools you need for the entire game at the beginning of the game, right? So um, I think I think you could do like almost like a Mega Man style where like, yeah, theoretically, they're like you could play rock, paper, scissors and do the this dungeon first and get the, you know, and you unlock maybe a power that, it makes this other dungeon easier, but like you can still solve the puzzle without it type thing, you know? And I think traditional Zelda dungeons, I mean, Twilight Princess and Ocarina of Time have some of the best, best dungeons in all of Zelda. Right. And I really miss those because the divine beasts, they were cool. Right. But the, they weren't traditional Zelda dungeon and the puzzles were kind of like, they're kind of lame. They're just kind of giant shrines, which like, I would if you're gonna give me a divine beast, I would have much rather had like four or five more shrines to like unlock a path through to get to the mm. boss of of it, you know? 
You know, I, I didn't have a power. The only problem with, I have with the Divide Beast were the bosses themselves. Uh, because of the degradation of the weapons, if you didn't have no weapons and definitely no arrows and stuff, your only weapon literally was the bomb. And you had to keep throwing it and stuff. Like, that was, like, your only way. And I think you need a, a some simple weapon that you can mm -hmm. use to help you defeat those bosses. Yeah, um, and that's, that's what I'm saying, though, is, like, I think you need to be able to cra craft and find unbreakable versions of weapons. And, like, my thought mm -hmm. was, like, you could beat the game without doing any of the dungeons, right? Just mm -hmm. like Breath of the Wild. But if you do the dungeons and you do them in a way or, you know, kind of go through in a specific way, not a specific way, but like, I don't know, maybe you have a secret chamber or something. And every dungeon has an unbreakable weapon, like an unbreakable sword an unbreakable shield an unbreakable boomerang. Uh, I think it's no question. We're going to get some sort of hook shot in this game. Uh, oh yes, please. You know, Cause like, I mean, every game's putting a grappling hook in their game this time at this time around. Right. Where yeah. I think, I think a uh, hook shot is no question. It, it'd be more of a return. Right. To the series. Right. Um, but I, my, my thing is, it's just like, give me, give me like six great dungeons instead of the divine beast style this time. And I think people would be extra thrilled, you know, or if there's like and a I, dark world or something. I don't know. Sorry. And I think that's where the sky part is going to be playing mm -hmm. a part in this game. Is uh, it like we knew, you know, they haven't made dungeons, but maybe some ancients made dungeons in the air so that uh -huh. nobody will ever get to them. Yeah. My theory, me. my theory is there's going to be four dungeons in the sky and four underground. This is my theory. Because we've seen them do both, right? We've seen them go underground mm -hmm. and we've seen them go in the sky, right? I think there's going to be either three or four in each area because, like, you're not going to travel the Divine Beast again, right? So No. I I think there's... I think they'll be in the game just, like, moving around, but I think they're going to be just, like, in the background. Yeah. And stuff. Yeah. Because we don't really know how much time has passed. Mm-hmm. Uh, and well, there's game. that and that theory too. Is like, is there time travel in this game? Because there are different theor I mean, seemingly different versions of Link in this game. One with long hair, one with the corrupted arm. The Link that we played as is in Breath of the Wild, right? Like, I think Age of Calamity did a lot of interesting things with making us think differently about time and events, right? And, uh even though I didn't really care for that game, I think characters are cool. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to time travel. I think we're going to see young Impa at some point in mm -hmm. uh, some of these characters in their younger state, or we're going to travel <laughs> forward in time and we're going to, they're all going to be gone and we have to solve certain things by ourselves. Right. Or maybe we go back in time to solve a problem in the future. You know, maybe that's going to be a big puzzle mechanic this time. We still have, what is that hand holding that heart with the, like the, when the first trailer first came out, what is that hand holding that heart, you know, and this, the, that word in this stuff, like, where did that come from? Um, yeah. What's the story with that? Cause if, if we pretty much know that that hand is weak yeah. in order for whatever enemy that's broken it in order to come back. Yeah. Um, because maybe it's not Ganon. Maybe it's not Ganondorf. Who is this enemy? Maybe that we're... fan theory that it is him with the corrupted arm, and he's trying to save himself. Wouldn't that be Wouldn't that be crazy if like Link was the bad guy of, the whole time? If the, yeah, I mean, if this version of Link was like Ganon, but like reincarnated at some point i don't know I, I don't know i think there's i think there's weird theories out there i don't believe in oh, yeah. a lot of them but also they're fun to think about right so i i i wonder if zelda's mom the queen plays a part in this because there's a cause... love story between the queen and ganon 
What kind of visual novel nonsense is this? Uh, <laughs> I mean, I'd buy it. I mean, um, we've never seen the queen or heard any stories in any of the Zelda games. It, yeah. it may be some lore you know, or some fan theories and stuff, but like Nintendo has never presented anything. So, and I'm, every time that Zelda comes around, we d- we've never had a queen in the game. I'm really interested in Zelda's story. I think I think this version of Zelda is the best version of Zelda they've ever made. Yeah, I, I love I love Skyward Sword Zelda, but I don't like that game. <laughs> I don't like playing that game. I like her, but I think this version of Zelda is like if you were to make a Zelda with a playable Zelda, this is the Zelda you would use. Like, man, I want I want to play as Zelda so bad. I think she's just awesome. I think she's so awesome. But yes. Anyways, we got to play as Link again. I'm Link. I don't talk. I just I go to sleep. I take a hundred year nap and then I wake up. We. And- Go All check he does my... is grunts like a man. <laughs> <laughs> we are the link to the character. Um, and I want to know what new recipes are we going to be cooking up? In know. horses. Or I wonder who are we riding in this gang? Who are we what? Riding in this gang. Are, like, like that big stone bird that Link lands. Oh. What is that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I just uh, I'm I'm really interested. So one of the things I need to do before Tears in the Kingdom comes out is play through Skyward Sword. I don't know when I'm going to be able to do that, but I'm interested in the in the sky lore and how it ties in. And I've tried to play through that game three separate times now, and it is incredibly difficult. And you're also in a time crunch since it comes out in May. I know. Although Skyward Sword is not that long. But I also have Fire Emblem. I also have Hogwarts Legacy. I have Destiny expansion. We have Star Wars Jedi Fall, uh, Jedi Survivor. Uh, there's something else coming out in April that I was really interested in, but now I forget, so it must not be that important. Um. So yeah, what's coming out in April, Ed? What did I miss? We don't know. Uh. Oh, the Horizon uh, DLC. That's another game I need to finish too. Is Horizon because that game is amazing. Oh, I was about I need to say to that it. the Kirby oh. one that's going to come out. No, I don't care about Kirby. The Kirby is supposed to be coming out in March, though. Look, that's there's, the there's only two Kirby games worth playing. One's on the DS and one's on the Wii U, and nobody's ever going to play them. So, just Canvas oh, Curse. Remaster it. Canvas Curse and Rainbow Curse. No, because they require a touch screen and a stylus and. Yeah, They're never gonna do that for Switch, yeah. unfortunately. Although Evan Yarga is really good, I did have I this. Evan. I did have this theory. I did have this theory that Nintendo's next console, whatever it is, is going to have a have dual screen functionality. I think it's going to be a clamshell, giant clamshell thing that you can plug into your TV, and then the touchscreen stuff translates to like a Wii Remote type thing. That would be cool. See. So yeah, I they can join all of the systems at once. Yeah, I don't really want that, but I Is have it? a theory. But anyways, we can talk about that a different day. Yes. That's for next gen Nintendo. Yes, coming soon. Yeah. Uh but we would we would save that. Yeah. Well, um well everybody, we got pack watch. Um uh, oh, we're, wanna... we're moving on already. Yes. Okay, yes. fine. I'm just looking at my new calendar I bought, which I'm very excited for. I gotta see if my calendar came in. Um, um my calendar's my phone, so Pack Watch. So there are three games coming out on Switch. I don't know if any of them are super interesting or not. Uh we have Children of Silent Town. Children of Silent Town is a dark adventure game that tells the story of Lucy, a girl growing up in a village deep in a forest inhabited by monsters. People disappearing is nothing uncommon here, but this time Lucy is old enough to investigate on her own. Or so she thinks. Bum, bum, bum. Mm -hmm. Lone Ruin. Lone Ruin is a spell-based roguelike twin-stick shooter with a focus on replayability. As an 
Uh, play as an explorer who seeks a mysterious ancient power and uh, venture in a ruined magical city. Build atop a source of magic used by olden mages to power and transform themselves. Neat. Uh, Vengeful Guardian Moon Rider. Ed, I thought of you when I saw this game. I don't know why. It just seems like a game you would play. Oh, yeah. Uh, I, know, I know what you're talking about. Uh, Vengeful Guardian Moon Rider is a side-scrolling action platformer that channels the golden age of classic 16-bit action games in a full throttle quest for revenge created to defend a to- uh, totalitarian state the moon rider rejects its programming and now seeks vengeance on its creators it's a cool it's, premise it, it's, it, it's, it reminds me of a mix of a genesis gay with act razor in yeah. a sense and the main and, character looks like some side of, some sort of cyborg samurai type character yeah which looks cool. And plus the the sprite is big as ever. I'm like, oh, the oh, thing is, uh, but um, I'm so I just found out about this game. Like I've never heard of it until like people said, well, like the game was coming to Switch and stuff. So this is kind of the only game that I'm looking forward to, um, and I'm excited to play it this week. Um, I'm uh, I don't know when it's dropping. I'm assuming it's dropping Thursday. Uh, I think um, it's like. Uh, Thursday probably yeah Thursday okay so yeah that's when I'll be picking it up um and everything so I am going to be picking this game up and trying it um the other two I think I just I just gotta watch some trailers for it and uh I'll go from there <laughs> yeah yeah I mean I'm gonna be honest with you none of these games really do it for me if it w- it would be uh this one if I did but i I've been very good. I have not bought a single game yet this year. It's been eight days and I have not purchased a video game this year. So your first purchase is going to be um, Zelda. Nope. It's going to be Fire Emblem. Actually, I've technically already paid off Zelda and Fire Emblem, but we'll cross that we'll bridge see. when they come in. <laughs> you gotta, <laughs> you gotta finish some games first. I know I have like 30 games I need to finish. At least she, I, yeah. I need to get back into the Final Fantasy re, uh, reunion. I know. I need to stream again. <laughs> we're, we're, we have goals. Although I already uh, failed at one of my New Year's resolutions. So, yeah. Which we'll, is? Uh, play at least uh, a, a little bit of a game two days a week. And I only played one game for one day this week. And that was Destiny 2 last night to play Iron Banner to get the armor. So, okay. yeah, I failed. I guess yeah, I could play a little bit after you, this you haven't You haven't failed if you was busy and you weren't able to make time to play. No, game. I have been trying to get all these new intros and Patreon stuff done for us. And it's not going as well as I would hope. And it's taking longer than I expected. And it's infuriating me and frustrating me and making me super anxious. And I see Cordy zooming in while I'm looking at the other screen. I can see her in the corner of my eye. Um, Let me help you. So that's that's where we're at. I'm off tomorrow. So I made a banter for the writing thing. I'm I'm caught up. So that's another thing I wanted to do too was write, and I did not do that. But anyways, um, should we move on to Game Fact Advance? Yes, let's yeah. move on to Game Fact Advance. This week in Nintendo history, everybody, with the popularity of 3D Zelda titles like Ocarina of Time, Majora's Mask, and Wind Waker, many Nintendo fans were wondering if there would ever be an, a great 2D uh, Zelda experience again in the early 2000s. Well, in 2005, the Nintendo faithful were rewarded with the Legend of Zelda Minish Cap for Game Boy Advance. This beautiful pixel art game is the second game in the timeline between Skyward Sword and Four Swords. The Minish, a small race of creatures known as the Picori by the Hylians and are only visible to children, bestowed the light and the sword to the boy in green. Minish Cap was the only mainline Zelda on the system, though there were two Four Swords games and a faithful port of A Link to the Past as well. So, Minish Cap, everybody. A 
beautiful artwork. Was I, yeah, that game's amazing. I love Minish Cap. Did Capcom? No, Capcom didn't do this. Yeah, one. Minish Cap. Capcom did Minish Cap. Oh, really? Uh uh-huh. yeah. Okay. I think they did. Maybe I made that up. Hold on. I don't want that to go on record. Busted. Everyone screen. screen they did three Zelda it. games. Right. I I have to give it to Capcom. They did two yes. Nintendo Capcom Capcom flagship developed this game. I knew Capcom did this game. I don't know why I questioned myself. Never question your intelligence, people. Everybody's as smart as they think they are. Sometimes. Wait, yeah, hold on. Capcom, hmm. Capcom worked on the Legend of Zelda, and they worked. They did the arcade of Luigi's Mansion. Hmm. I'm surprised. Hmm. Capcom. Capcom. Capcom should make Eternal Darkness. Come on, Nintendo. Give it to him. I I that would be interesting. Anyways, let's uh that's our game fact advance for the week. Um we have a couple questions. Um one of these I don't know if we answered them or not, but we're going to answer it anyway. So I think maybe we did now that we talked about it. But anyways, it's time for question block. Shane Kelly writes in. He asks, with Tales of Symphonia receiving a release on the Switch in February, what other Bandai Namco games should they bring to the console? Tales of Arise. I know. Tales of Arise is another game I need to finish, but I really loved what I played, and then I stopped playing because... Same. Same. I loved it. I loved... That game was awesome, and I just stopped playing it. Uh, oh, I need a list of. I know I'm looking it up mean, right now. I, I like I said earlier. Oh, uh, uh, Tales of Graces F, Project X Zone. They need to bring to oh, Switch God. and Damn. Project X Zone Two. Mm. Pac Man and the Ghostly Adventures. No. Yes. <laughs> no, I have both those on Wii U, and they're both bad. They're so good. What are you talking about? Did they okay. bring did they bring um Pac-Man Championship to Wii? Uh, Wii to Switch? Uh Pac-Man Championship Edition 2 Plus is on Switch. Okay. The first, the first one is not. Okay. But um let's see. I think so I think I actually <laughs> think a ga- uh, a series that would do well on Switch is dot hack, honestly. Um I don't know if you remaster yeah. the PS2 uh, yeah. quadrilogy or if you just put the last recode version you know, on. You know what? I never understood why they did that. Was it those games like like five to six hours in gameplay left? No, those games were super long. My cousin was really into them. The thing that made those games unique though was that like uh, the next game it did the whole Mass Effect thing before Mass mm-hmm. Effect where it like read your previous game save and transferred it over to the next game. Yeah, because it's like it's like volume one, volume mm-hmm. two, and stuff. Yeah. And I and I never understood why because I think it was like what every three or four months or something that game came out. Um, I'm not sure how they did that, but it was it was pretty interesting. I just know my cousin was super into those games for a while. Mm-hmm. Should I text him and see how he's doing? Um, mm-hmm. I also. I also think that another good game that to come over would be uh, Code Vein. I don't know how that would do, but uh, I know Code Vein is kind of like that anime vampire soul yeah. type game that people, some people loved and some people hated. But um, you know, it's I, fine. No series X. Um, Zeno Saga episode three. Shoot, just bring both in the saga so Why don't they you could just bring the entire thing over. They gotta go to school. Well, there's that Enix, rumor. Though. No, oh, go ahead. Corey. And I Namco published those games. Xeno Saga would be the one that they would have to go to Square for. Xeno Gears, that's just the Zeno one that's Square. That's right. Yeah, that, that's why when you say bring all of them, that was because of Xeno Gears. I was thinking of, so. yeah, uh, Soul Calibur. Yeah, I, th- yeah, Soul <gasps> Calibur, Put Soul Link Calibur, too. Cowards. <laughs> they should bring like, that. And Tekken. Yeah, I take a tag tournament. <laughs> I think I actually think that's one thing the Switch is drastically missing is a fighting franchise outside of Smash. Like mm-hmm. a yeah. like 
a quote unquote real fighting game. Um, I'm actually kind of shocked that they aren't trying to put Street Fighter on it. Although I know that I don't, I know that it's like incredibly full of fully featured and whatever, but like Street Fighter 6, I'm shocked that they haven't tried because Mortal Kombat 11 is on Switch. Yeah. Oh, I think okay. I, th- I thought I, I think... saw that it was going to come out on Switch, but it's well, not. Well, they have the that Street Fighter Anniversary Collection. They have the Capcom Fighting Game Collection. Well, number yeah. six. And yeah, and then they have the HD. Uh, what the Final Challengers of Two came at launch. Uh, yeah. Or that May, I guess. But I th- I think Capcom. Because of the Japanese market and the evil tournaments and stuff, I think they kind of felt, you know, with PlayStation being such a big, um, big console and they getting most of the like a lot of the fighting sticks that come out is always used on PlayStation consoles. I think Capcom just figured if we want to get our game on that kind of tournament level, it was it's, it. I, they probably felt like that Switch wouldn't be or Nintendo stuff wouldn't be the good place to play it. That you know, let's put it. If we got it. On, let's put it on PlayStations because it, it looks like there's a lot of people around the world who own the PlayStation. And for the fighting community, the fighting games do do better on PlayStation's consoles. I mean, Nintendo players are not mad or anything and stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, it's it's a genre that's oversaturated all anyway. Mm-hmm. But like, if if people who I think Capcom is just like, well, they have Smash, and that's their big, that's their Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat on that side. Yeah. We have Sony doesn't really have anything, and Xbox really doesn't have anything. Even though Xbox has Killer Instinct, uh, we could we could be the leading game on Sony's platform. So I think that's probably why. You know? I mean, and plus, oh, go ahead. Oh, I, I you continue because I have my thing is going to be a little bit. Oh no, longer. that's that that was it. Oh, I know what I know what franchise Shane wants us to say. He wants us to say Bat and Kados. He wants us. He wants us to go deep into Monolith. Oh, for, uh, both of those games. Mm-hmm. But we st- we stated that before. I know, but I I know that's why he asked this question. <laughs> Uh, I would love, I would love to have him on Switch because I never got to play those two. Yeah, can we uh, get Shane back on the show maybe next week or something? Yeah, I will um, ask him. Yeah. By the way, Grayson and his cold. Mm-hmm. What a man! Now he's all like cozied up, drinking probably his fancy tea and no. playing some Switch. You know, Shoot. Grayson is like, down. For, Grayson is like down for the count. Couch, watch, playing Switch, watching something fun on tv eating some fancy food because every time he posts food i'm like man i really want to eat that it looks delicious and fancy he 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 made one post today (laughs) uh, of him being sick playing the switch and then that was it i know i saw it that's why i was so bad is he doesn't it sounds like he doesn't watch the podcast because we cough in like almost every stream or sniffle or something is going on with i feel i i mean (laughs) I'm going to be honest here. I ha- I have a fever. I've been coughing like hysterically all day. I And now you're overworking yourself and yep. going to make yourself more sicker? Yeah. Oh yeah. So my great. wife told me I had to go to the doctor tomorrow and I was like, "Yeah, we'll see. I don't know yet." Just mm-hmm. just push through. You'll be fine one day. Soon. I've been sick for over a month though. Like I've been sick since be like way before Christmas like I started getting sick that last week we recorded, Ed. Mm-hmm. Oh, last week? No, like before, like during Christmas break. Oh, okay. I got sick. Oh, wow. But you did say that everybody in the house was sick and yeah. you weren't. Yeah, my That's wife is uh... super sick too. She has a fever. She's like down for the count too. Like I might work from home tomorrow because I don't want to get anybody in the office sick, but we'll see how I feel in the morning. Well, Corey, uh, let's... Uh, Courtney, did oh. you have any games? I'm oh, sorry. Or oh, Courtney? No. Do we have any questions, Any more questions or was yeah. it just Shane's? No, we have yeah. we have Stephanie's question. This is from a while ago. I don't think we answered it, but somehow I think we maybe we answered it. 
there's a couple of questions in our discord that I don't know if we answered really. Um, but she, she asked us a couple of weeks ago, uh, if Hideo, Hideo Kojima made a game specifically for Nintendo with a Nintendo IP, what would it look like? Did we answer that? I don't think we did. No, we didn't. Um, I, we, we did mention that they did work together, um, uh, with Dennis Dyack to bring Metal Gear Solid, um, yeah. To switch, I mean to a uh, GameCube, not Switch. Goodness, Twin Snakes. Yeah. Um, I, I oh, think. Oh man, what about for, a new Zone of the Enders game? That's what everybody's going to say. Zone of, Zone of the Enders would start as a Star Fox game. Mm. Um, that'd, man, be that'd be cool. A Star Fox game where your Arwing turned into a mech and you just fought other mechs. Ah, I'm all in. They Do just it. need another Star Fox adventure. Yeah. Uh, oof, we've had a lot of discussions about Star Fox and I think Star Fox needs something like that I don't think it has to be like Star Fox Adventure all the way but I do think it needs to be different than an on rail shooter yeah. it's got to do something I don't know if you played Starlink uh, Cordy from Ubisoft mm-hmm. no but... the only one I played is the, the Star Fox from GameCube the adventure one hmm. <laughs> Mm. Yeah. Oh, so I she guess... does. She does. She didn't play any of the good ones. She played that one and thought that's what Star Fox was. <laughs> yeah, and that one's pretty good. <laughs> I think the internet you... disagrees with me. Not, you. never mind. No, I I, do... I like Star Fox Adventure, but I think the internet don't. would highly disagree with you. All right, I so like I have to game. go order the other ones and play those, and then I'll get back to y'all. I, um, I will I would say, say I would say play Star Fox sixty four and Star Fox Assault and then you can be done. Okay. I I, I will say that um uh, I would love to see Kojima do Geist. Like if you him because it's military with ghosts and possession I mean, and you know that's in his it. will in his that's in his wheelhouse. Cause like Kojima's not gonna do anything with Animal Crossing. Oh my gosh. Could that you would be the though? Conduct. That would be Conduct. the highest level of yeah. nonsense. <laughs> I'd buy it for sure. Oh, that game would sell 90 million copies day one. I'm trying <laughs> yeah. I'm physically looking, and digitally combined. <laughs> I'm looking up Nintendo IP that would just the IP that they own. Um, I actually think a Kojima Metroid game would be kind of interesting. Mm, I think be I weird. Don't know. it would be super weird and like. You know, playing with Samus is kind of like it would almost be like other M, but to a ten uh-huh. in terms of like relationships and like her past and everything. Um, <laughs> Electroplankton. I forgot about that game. There, there is the Femcon Detective stuff games. I can see Kojima did doing. Uh, Fem Femcon Detective was a series that they only did in Japan. It just recently came out on Switch two mm. years ago. Actually, uh, and stuff. I got the perfect game if we're gonna go the Zone of the Enders route. Okay, hold yeah. on, hold on one second, Greg. I am. Um, uh, <laughs> um, because he did Snatcher and Police Knots. He could do a adventure game in the Femicon Detective games and bring that to Switch. Um, uh, or he could do he, I, or he could actually do something with Hotel Dusk. Yeah. Um, a follow up to that. Um, I would love to see that. Okay, go ahead, Corey. You know, it'd be a really cool thing to give Kojima and let him do literally whatever he wanted with it would be set in punishment. Yeah. I just feel like that, like, I feel like it would be like a prey situation, though, from Bethesda, where like they would just use the name because they own the IP and not actually attach it to anything. But I think Send in Punishment would be like a really interesting thing if he mixed something like, if he mixed Metal Gear with something like Zone of the Enders, but made it really like. That's. Ooh. All the characters hmm. are so serious about everything, but everybody else who's playing it knows it's wacky and crazy and really stupid. That hmm. Or we could give him F to your own call today. F zero be would be a bunch of Nazis too. The reason why I send the punishment Kojima treasure. Cause I don't I don't know if Nintendo owns send send the punishment. They do. I'm oh they own it? Okay. I'm literally looking at a list of IP Nintendo owns. 
Oh, okay. Then yeah, that could. Oh goodness, send a punishment dub with dub with Kojima that plays like Space Harrier. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Um, so I, I will say this as long as I think Treasure be part of the production with Kojima production to make that happen, I'm down for it. Well, I think what is, is Kojima just directed and and directed it, and Kojima Productions and Treasure worked on it together. Yeah, I'd be down for that. Yes, that'd be cool. I, I would definitely be down for that. Mm-hmm. Or we could give him Urban Champion and we could all go home. Oh, no. oh shoot! <laughs> get us out of here before I have any more crazy ideas. Sakurai and Kojima doing Kid Icarus oh, will gosh. be a good one. Nope, we're done. <laughs> but everybody, that's going to be it for Nintendo Power Block. I hope you guys uh, let us know what is your anticipated games uh, for the year, and um. You know, we want to know what game can Kojima do for Nintendo, or what would you like to see from Bandai Namco on Nintendo Switch? With that, everybody, have a great week, have a great weekend, and we will see you next time on Nintendo Power Block. Bye, everybody. Woohoo! Bye. Bye. Happy to be here today. Thank you. <laughs> Goodbye. Nintendo Power Block is a product of Boss Rush Media, LLC, and is recorded from our headquarters in Akron, Ohio. The show is hosted by me, Edward Varnell. My co-hosts are Corey Derrick and Cordy Yikes. You can find Corey at I am Corey in HD on Twitter and Instagram, as well as hosting the Boss Rush Podcast and Tom Casuals, the Destiny Podcast. You can find Cordy at Cordy underscore Yikes on Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram. You can find me at that retro code on Twitter and Instagram. Follow Nintendo Power Block on all social media platforms at Power Block Podcast. You can also follow Boss Rush Media and Boss Rush Network on all major social media platforms. Join the Boss Rush Network, Discord, and Facebook groups to interact with other friends and fans. Visit BossRush.net for more great content and patreon.com slash BossRushMedia to learn how you can support this show. Thanks for listening and we'll see you next time.